Central China, 1250 BC. The Shang Dynasty is at its height. Charismatic King Wu Ding rules. By his side, Fu Hao, his warrior queen, commander of armies, invincible in battle. For years, archaeologists could only speculate about who the mysterious Shang were and where they came from. Now, 3,000 years later, science reveals a highly advanced civilization. And a true picture emerges of the achievements of China's first dynasty. Anyang, China, over 450 kilometers south of Beijing. Ever since 1928, this unassuming city has been a magnet for scholars of the ancient world. For Anyang is the birthplace of Chinese archaeology. It's the longest running excavation in China and one of its most important. 2009. Archaeologists from across the globe converge on Anyang. Their mission is to crack the puzzle of the Shang dynasty. Chinese history is full of colorful stories about the Shang, but no one knew what was legend and what was fact. In their quest for the truth, the archaeologists have to look back to 1976 and the discovery of a lone tomb in a farmer's field. Like the tomb of Egypt's Tutankhamun, it is full of riches worthy of a king. 15,000 tombs have been found at Anyang, but this one is unique. For it's the only unlooted royal tomb of the Shang era. It would have dawned on them rather slowly as they've excavated this tomb that, in fact, they had found the largest unlooted Shang tomb that's ever been found. I mean, this is essentially the King Tut tomb of China. The tomb dates to just 75 years after Tutankhamun's burial and a thousand years before China's first emperor. Packed full of treasures, the tomb contains finely carved jade creatures and figurines, bone and ivory artifacts exquisitely carved, thousands of cowrie shells, over a hundred battle axes, spears and daggers with lethal blades, and an impressive collection of beautiful, intricately made bronze vessels. It's clearly the tomb of a leading military commander or wealthy prince. But when archaeologists decipher the name on some of the bronzes, they are in for a surprise. This is the tomb of a woman, the legendary Fu Hao. She's believed to have been one of the three main wives of King Wu Ding. He may have had as many as 60. Of all of King Wu Ding's consorts, Fu Hao is by far the most prominent. You could perhaps argue that she's, she's favored somehow. The Shang were known to be invincible warriors. The contents of Fu Hao's tomb suggest one reason why. There are over a hundred different weapons. Now, this one, interestingly, is sort of a, it's almost like a hybrid between a battle axe and, and this, which is more spiky. You would either swing it like this or with one hand like this and perhaps holding a shield. So not only could you 
hack somebody with it and the blade go into them, you can also lop heads off. The large number of weapons suggests Fu Hao was involved in military campaigns. The weapons are testimony to her military prowess. And the discovery of a bronze ewer axe suggests she was of high rank. Fu Hao has a very famous example. The blade is about a foot wide. It's the largest ewer axe, I think, that, that's been found so far. Now, this not only indicates status, but probably uh, warrior status. Legend also tells that Fu Hao was a military commander of first rank, leading Wu Ding's most famous generals. And how she may have courageously raised an unprecedented 13,000 troops to fight the Shang's enemies, known as the Qiang. All the evidence suggests Fu Hao was indeed a warrior. Campbell searches for even more clues to her military career. He has a fantastic aid to find out more about Fu Hao, a resource almost unparalleled in this era of history. These are oracle bones. The Shang were one of the first civilizations to have writing. Tiny inscriptions record the questions Wu Ding and his successors posed to their dead ancestors scratched onto animal scapulars and turtle shells. The Shang believed their ancestors had the power to influence everything, including military campaigns. The Oracle Bones chronicle key events in the life of Shang royalty and are the earliest record of Chinese history. These tiny characters are also the direct ancestors of modern-day Chinese script. It's the oldest writing system still in use today. Of the roughly 200,000 oracle bones found in storage pits across Anyang so far, about 330 divinations feature Fu Hao. They reveal much about her life, her military campaigns, her health, and even her pregnancy. This is a special treat to get to see the original bones. Normally specialists work from, from rubbings of the bone. Ah, it's a little bit hard to read. Yes, Fu Hao. The text is tiny, and scholars still struggle to interpret all of the characters, but Campbell arrives at a ballpark meaning. Stepping back and putting it all together, the prince wants to take Fu Hao to enter this particular place. Um, he wants to gather up troops to, to launch an attack and bring Fu Hao with him to do something that's, that's not clear. Basically, what the prince is divining about is whether or not he should go ahead with this military plan. The Oracle Bones tell of almost constant war during Wu Ding's reign. He was even known as Ding the Warlike. Wu Ding and his beloved Fu Hao were leaders of a society founded on war. And a macabre discovery in her tomb suggests a possible reason why. Fu Hao shared her grave with 16 people sacrificed at her burial. Harvard archaeologist Rowan Flad believes Fu Hao's tomb confirms the legends of the Shang's passion for human sacrifice. So this is a plan of Fu Hao's tomb. There was one in this pit which was underneath Fu Hao herself. And then there were eight other individuals who were outside the coffin but inside the chamber. Then there were three in niches that were carved into the sides of the tomb trench. On top of the tomb chamber, in between the two niches, there were four more individuals. Uh, there was one here that was just really a head. Um, he probably wasn't smiling. There was another